Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here. Welcome to the next video on my video series dedicated to Caddy. So in this video, we're going to learn how to secure our Caddy server with our custom SSL certificates. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as you might know, Caddy has its configurations with itself that can actually integrate with SSL providers in order to enable you to generate and renew your valid SSL certificates without having to do anything manually. But suppose in scenarios that you have your own SSL certificates files or like in scenarios that you cannot actually configure and integrate it with some SSL provider. So the least you can do is to generate your own self-signed certificates and enable some kind of security to your local communications between your services. So in this video, I'll actually try to generate some self-signed certificates, but the process will be exactly the same for configuring the caddy with your valid certificate files. So if I move to the terminal right over here, if I hit LS, you can see that I've got some files prepared that actually holds all the configurations in order to spin up a caddy server as a docker container. So the first thing I'll try to nano the docker compose file and over here you can see that I've got two backend services which are actually some echo server that will try to respond exactly with the data of whatever request that they receive. So these two echo servers will be acting as our backend services that will be proxied behind the caddy server itself. So if I move down right over here, you can see that I've got a caddy service and I'm using the caddy's official image with some recent tag and I've set the restored policy for times that my container stops by any reason. So the Docker engine will try to restart this container to maintain its health and make sure that it is up and running. So next on the environment variable section I have set the time zone in order to set the time inside the container that will be created. And right over here I am mapping the 80 and 443 ports of my machine that the caddy container will be created on. So I'm mapping the port 80 and 443 of the host machine to the exact same ports inside the container. So as a result the clients will be able to make requests using the host machine's IP address with these ports in order to communicate to the caddy server that will be running inside the container. So right over here I'm mapping some volumes to inside the container which are the dot slash caddy file which will be the default configuration for caddy to try to configure itself when it tries to start its service. Next I've got the dot slash data and dot slash config directory mapped to the slash data and slash config directory inside the container. So these are the two directories that the caddy service will try to use in order to store its data and whatever configurations that it will be creating. And lastly, right over here, I've got the dot slash search directory mapped to the slash search inside the container. So this is the container that I'll be using in order to generate and store my certificate files. So I'll try to exit from the nano and actually move into the search directory. So by using the OpenSSL command, I'll be actually trying to create my cert file and key file. So then I'll be configuring the caddy to grab these files and serve them in order to be able to respond on HTTPS protocol also. So I'll set the domain variable as the exact domain that I'll be trying to access the caddy from. By using the OpenSSL gen private key, I'll be able to actually create my key file. So I'll hit enter, I'll hit ls, and you can see that my key file has been generated. And next, again, by using the OpenSSL command, I'll be actually creating my CSR file, which is actually required to generate the certificate file itself. So I'll hit enter and ls. So my CSR file is created. And lastly, again, by using the OpenSSL command and passing in the CSR file and the .key file, I'll be creating the certificate file itself. So I've passed the dash days to 10 years. So as a result, 
this certificate file will be valid for 10 years from now. So I'll hit enter and if I hit ls again you can see that I've got my cert file and key file ready in order to be used by the caddy server. So I'll try to generate exactly the same files for another domain. So as a result, I'll be able to demonstrate how we can configure multiple domains in the caddy file. So I've done the exact same commands for my second domain. If I hit LS, you can see that I've got the exact same three files for my second domain. So I'll move a directory back, I'll hit LS and try to nano the caddy file. Right over here, you can see that I am telling the caddy to listen to the PC domain for which the caddy will try to listen on both the 80 and the 443 port of this domain right over here. So by using the TLS directive, I'm actually able to pass the cert and the key files full path. So the caddy will be able to load the certificate files and as a result, be able to handle the HTTPS requests for this domain name. And right over here, I've got a simple reverse proxy directive to the backend on port 80. So this backend right over here is exactly the same name that I used on the Docker Compose file for the first echo server. So with the exact same configurations and directives, I am actually passing the cert and the key files for the second domain and doing the reverse proxy to the second echo server inside the Docker Compose file. So I'll try to exit the nano and if I hit Docker Compose up dash D, I am actually getting some errors complaining about some other containers that is using the same name with the exact name that I defined in the Docker Compose file. So I'll remove that and come right back. So right now if I hit Docker Compose up dash D, I'll see that my three containers are being created with a network attaching these containers to that network. So if I say docker compose ps, I'll see that my three containers are up and running with the exact same ports mapped to inside the container. And if I say docker compose logs dash f to follow the logs and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 lines of the output of the containers of this docker compose file. So as I can see, things are looking good and actually I'll be able to make requests to this caddy server with two different domains that I configured in the caddy file. So I'll move to the browser and try to make requests to the HTTPS. And as you can see, the browser is complaining about the custom SSL certs that we generated ourselves. So because we know that we generated these certificate files, it is safe for us to proceed. So I'll hit the advanced button and proceed to the website. So as you can see, I can actually access the caddy server with the HTTPS protocol. And if I hit the not secure button right over here and the certificate is not valid button. And as you can see about the details of the certificate files that is provided by the server of this domain. The validity period of the certificate files is exactly 10 years from now. So I'm recording this on 2024. And as you can see, the expiration date is set to 2034. So with the exact same steps, if I go to the second domain and try to access the domain with the HTTPS protocol. Again, try to accept the risks and you can see that I'm actually able to make requests with the HTTPS protocol. And if I go exactly the same place and see the details of the SSL certs, I can see that the common name that the cert file is signed is exactly the same name for this domain. So I can make sure that the caddy is actually using the correct files, correct cert files to sign the requests and serve the website on HTTPS protocol. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this one. If you have any questions, any recommendations, 
of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below if you haven't watched the previous videos in this video series i recommend you give a visit where you can learn about the basic concepts basic installation and configurations like bot detection ip restriction settings and things like that so lastly if you found the video useful don't forget to give a like and subscribe to my channel which will help grow the channel and motivate me to create more free contents like this so with that that's all for this video and i hope to see you in the next videos